Hey all here OS Reviews, today we're taking a revisited look back at the LG Velvet here in 2023. LG is no longer making smartphones anymore, it is quite sad, but about a year and a half ago they quit the smartphone business. It was one of their last phones before they pulled out along with the LG Wing, which had a swiveling second display that could be used for additional applications, recording video, even though they're rocking identical processors, at least in the US variant, which is the Qualcomm Snapdragon 760. 65G, which is a 5G capable chip. It's not quite flagship grade like the 800 series, but still is energy efficient and allows it to be a little bit more price competitive as a result. Now this particular phone can now be found for under $100. It's really a bargain compared to other similar phones from its era such as the Google Pixel 5, which has also the same exact chip uh, that is still considerably more expensive, often by $100, if not more, if you're shopping online. The Velvet was a departure from LG's other phones at the time, from their long-running G and V series, which, although very powerful, had relatively similar characteristics that they've been using for a number of years now versus the Velvet. That was a little bit more of a rehaul by having these much more dramatic waterfall curved edges. Love them or hate them, you have to admit that they are quite sleek and futuristic looking, at least for LG at the time, and also these delicate chamfered aluminum edges just really shimmers and catches your attention. It's kind of a throwback to the days of fashion phones, which LG uh, was one of the largest players in. And that glimmer also applies to how the phone looks on the back, which is indeed super sleek even to this day, by the fact that there is no real camera hump or dedicated module, everything is just the lens itself positioned on the super shimmery glass finish that came in a number of colors. This is the silver edition that was standard for AT&T in the US, but there was also a vibrant Aura sunlight, a green, there's even a red edition, truly customizable like a fashion accessory, which was exciting. LG also made kind of a big deal out of their camera setup, uh, which was shaped to be getting progressively smaller as you move down, kind of like a water drop, and really is just showing the attention and detail that they put into crafting the way that this phone really felt and looked. The solid aluminum frame, the glass front and back, which by the way does support Qi wireless charging as well. The symmetry and way that everything flows together is something that you really have to see to get a better appreciation of. Now, other specs of this device include 6 gigabytes of RAM coupled with IP68 water resistance. This OLED display, by the way, is a Full HD Plus resolution. It is a standard 60 Hz panel, which was one area that was a little bit disappointing. Having at least 90 Hz even for the time would have been nice to find, but it is what it is. Still a quality display when it comes to supporting HDR10, having these awesome contrast levels. And one other neat trick that the Velvet supported was the Wacom Bamboo Ink and you're able to have pressure sensitivity and write on the display, similar to a Samsung Galaxy Note, even though there is no integrated slot on the phone itself. One other special feature of the Velvet was the support for an optional second screen accessory, which works in pretty much the same way as many of LG's final flagships, including the G8X that we reviewed a while back, which allows you to snap the phone into this case and basically add a second identical OLED screen on the side, which unlocks features like like additional controls for gaming, allow you to do more multitasking, splitting two screens up at a time. It's maybe not something that you'll use all the time, but still it's a nice versatile accessory if you need it. And unlike the Surface Duo, it's not always permanently attached, so you can remove it and still have a normal phone experience. We are running on Android 12, so at least LG have been pretty diligent in terms of pushing software updates over to this device. With that being said, it still is a pretty heavy customization on top of Android. However, some of the things that I do like include the built-in wallpaper animation where the entire thing kind of ripples downwards like you're touching on fabric. Again, this phone supports 5G LTE with AT&T here in the US, along with having all the regular connectivity including GPS, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, NFC that we've come to expect. Now, one thing that is a little bit confusing about the Velvet though is depending on the version that you're looking at, there are some slightly different configurations available. For example, in international markets, there is a model using the 
MediaTek 1000C processor instead of the 765 from Qualcomm. And then there's another model that is using the slightly older Snapdragon 845 processor. Although again, the 765G is the most common model that you'll find. And they all have relatively similar performance. Arguably the MediaTek and the 845 variants are just a touch faster when it comes to graphics performance, along with a 4,300 milliamp hour capacity cell, which using again the seven nanometer chip that is energy efficient, it will allow the phone to run smoothly in my testing for about two days, sometimes even a touch longer before I had to recharge it again. A final look here at the hardware, there is a standard Type-C port at the bottom along with a loudspeaker. This phone does have a stereo set by the way, so the earpiece also serves as a stereo speaker, which is actually quite good when it comes to watching back videos, listening to music, and there is a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, something that LG has been very good at preserving on all their devices, although the Velvet unfortunately doesn't have the same impressive quad DAC that the G8 as well as the V60 for example had. Now perhaps the only slight con with having such a dramatic curve for the display and the glass here on the back is we do have a pretty thin metal frame, meaning that the buttons are also a little on the small side. Uh, but overall they're at least quite tactile and they're also etched in metal corresponding to the dedicated volume as well as a Google Assistant key, which unfortunately can't be remapped, aside from a standard power key located on the other side. Now, last but not least, in terms of that camera array, we are talking about a 48 megapixel primary lens. There is a 8 megapixel ultra wide, as well as a 5 megapixel depth sensor, and then a dual tone LED flash. This is a relatively large and tall phone with that 6.8 inch screen, but by no means is it a heavy device. In fact, it is surprisingly thin and light for what it is. Taking a look at the four mentioned camera. Things that it does well include very fast when it comes to the autofocus, quick to snap images, and you are able to also toggle here between the two times. This is a digital zoom. There is no telephoto optical zoom on here. And also once more to go into an ultra wide angle shot. With that being said, the wide angle lens on this camera at 8 megapixels is a pretty big contrast with the primary 48 megapixel lens. So there is definitely a difference in the quality and resolution, but at least you are able to have that versatility when you're shooting. There is a auto kind of AI mode which can recognize different scenes for changing properties like saturation accordingly and it does make a slight difference. Auto HDR also works quite well. Now video can also be captured up to 4K resolution. They have an ASMR recording mode that will amplify the sound pickup from the mics, even have a quote unquote voice bokeh mode in that it will zoom in to the subject that is talking and try to cancel out the background noises. Aside from that though, other Features such as the portrait bokeh, as well as things like a few AR emoji stickers are all quite similar to past LG phones that we've seen. There's also a manual mode, which allows you to fine tune things like exposure, as well as you even get a histogram of how much you're peaking, taking a look at aperture settings, things like that. And you also are able to toggle into a night mode as well, which again, is not gonna really match the same level that you get from a pixel, but it will do a similar trick of trying to expose a shot for a longer duration of time. This was captured at around 7 p.m. without any lights on in the background, and it's actually making out the colors and details far better than I was expecting. Now, in the night mode, as well as in the regular HDR modes and AI modes, it is capturing at a 12 megapixel resolution, but still is perfectly sufficient uh, when it comes to just sharing on social media. The 48 megapixels is really just useful if you are trying to crop, but it will capture and take up more space as well. So this, for example, 48 megapixel image takes up 26.6 megabytes versus about 7 megabytes if I was capturing the regular 13 megapixel mode. A pretty vibrant looking result, maybe not quite as realistic as some of the pixels and iPhones in terms of this one has a little bit more saturation and some slight hints of sharpening going on, but for what it is, really not bad, especially at the current price that you can find this phone at. Just a final few shots here of food, for example, it slightly brightens up images to make it a little more appetizing. But overall, I think it's doing a pretty good job in really everyday usage. This does have a under display fingerprint sensor, uh, which is also quite fast and responsive. It's definitely better than the LG G8X that was the first phone from LG to use a under display sensor. This one recognizes your touch 
pretty much just one second and you're in, and it is relatively reliable without too many false positives or negatives. The thing I will say though is for the AT&T version of the phone, if you are in the US, there is a lot of bloatware that unfortunately AT&T insists on including with their devices. So you're going to have to spend a few minutes to clean things up. For example, all these apps that you see here, Pinterest, Solitaire, a lot of these trial versions of games, Amazon Shopping, Booking.com, Facebook, they're all AT&T apps that came pre-installed along with a handful of AT&T services. Regardless, coming back to the phone here's settings, you can see that additional software tricks include using the AMOLED display to have an always on mode. So taking an example of that, here is a clock that slowly comes to life after the screen times out. Everything from colors to how the things are being displayed, kind of similar to the newest versions of iOS, ironically, uh, but of course it was found on this LG phone and on Android devices in general for a number of years now, including a one-handed mode as well that you can trigger by long holding on the edge of the screen to activate here, just because this is a relatively tall phone. Even the screen properties can be further bumped up to become more vivid. Of course, one of the benefits here is the haptics. Again, those small touches are handled really well. So when it comes to typing things out, the vibration motor just feels ultra sensitive compared to true truly budget new phones, which sometimes are a little bit too loose and rattly, you're able to get a pretty reliable connection. I was constantly getting almost three to four bars of service and had no issues in terms of making calls. Folks said that I sounded loud and clean. All right, so some takeaways here is the speaker quality is excellent. Uh, it is far and beyond better than any budget phone, which has only a single mono speaker. You get true stereo separation, which on a more stretched device like this, it is quite immersive. And what's pleasant here is the earpiece isn't too much more quiet compared to the bottom firing speaker either. So even though technically it's more of a tweeter compared to bass at the bottom, it still feels quite well balanced. Super wide viewing angles, vivid blacks, that it just makes everything pop on here and it's a joy to use for content consumption. Now speaking of web browsing, again, no surprises here that the chipset is powerful enough to handle uh, really browsing without any problems at all, coupled with the reliable internet connectivity. This works like a dream when it comes to reading back articles, even on more complex pages like The Verge or New York Times. I can read back the whole desktop version of the site as well, which, by the way, again, in the desktop mode when you're using type c to a external display it will load the desktop version of the site by default and those tabs will be kept separate from the ones that you have on your phone i was able to open up well over 10 different apps things were still running quite smoothly when jumping back and forth between them when it comes to general gaming performance it also is serviceable at least for most mid-end games so if you're trying to install titles like PUBG and asphalt they will still run uh, however it typically will be a better experience if you slightly lower the graphic settings to medium for instance compared to again truly flagship grade devices which have a snapdragon 800 series chipset but it still is serviceable there's nothing from the play store that you can't install and open up on here nothing crashes everything is still relatively smooth and playable without really much delay or too much thermal throttling either it still remains quite cool during operation with a large enough battery that things are still going to keep you running for a while before you have to really worry about topping up. So that's more or less it as far as our revisited review of the LG Velvet here in 2023. And I have to say it's again very bittersweet. Every time that I pick up a LG phone again, I'm just reminded of how much I really miss this manufacturer, which sometimes challenged the status quo and just offered a little bit more diversity in the marketplace. The LG Velvet I think is still a very worthwhile option to consider, especially if you are shopping with a more limited budget in mind. Definitely was a bit of an underrated phone in my opinion. and one can only hope that maybe in the future LG as well as companies like HTC can decide to make a bit of a resurgence if they re-enter the smartphone space. You can check out additional details if you're interested in the links down below. For now that's been our video. Thanks for watching here at OS Reviews. That's been a revisited look at the LG Velvet.